Hello everyone, this is Deborah Richardson and today I am putting the AP in Happy where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. This podcast will give a voice to accounts payable team members by talking about the growing reality of cyber attacks in their world and which vendor setup and vendor management techniques they can apply to protect the vendor master file from fraud. If you are looking for vendor process training for you or your entire vendor team, head over to my site at DeborahRRichardson.com and click on the Vendor Team Training Solved button to learn more about what is included in the monthly or annual plan and also to download a 2021 training schedule. Get the training that you and your team needs to avoid payment fraud, duplicate vendors, compliance fines, and more. Are you in the middle of an AP automation project and realize you don't have email addresses for your vendors to notify them of changes to your process? Or maybe you're doing a routine, hopefully, um, vendor master file cleanup and need to populate missing vendor emails. Well, you've come to the right episode. Keep listening. Welcome to episode 146, nine ways to collect missing vendor email addresses to update the vendor master file. Update it for 2021. Since AP automation has exploded as a result of the pandemic starting in 2020 and really continuing into 2021, I thought I would repost, replay, and update uh, on collecting a critical piece of data. So if you're getting ready to implement your accounts payable automation, dynamic discounting, or vendor self-registration portal, and you don't have the critical item you need to increase adoption. I've got nine ways that you can collect that valid vendor email address. Now, you may already know that a lack of valid uh, vendor email addresses in your vendor master file can really have the following effects on AP. So with any type of um, vendor portal implementation or AP automation project, uh, project, it removes the option for the vendor email communication for an up to, uh, upcoming change and subsequent use of the solution. So if you don't have their email address on file, you can't email and let them know. And lots of those uh, software platforms, uh, especially the vendor portals, the vendors receive the registration request or the invitation via email. If you don't have an email for them, then they're not going to get it. The next thing is uh, it can have an effect on your working capital solutions. So it can decrease the participation and the enrollment from vendors since they will be unaware of any alternative payment options. Uh, The next one is remittance payment information. And this is actually a big one, although no one ever talks about it. Um, If the vendors don't have an email address and they can't get your remittance, uh, the automated remittance that with most systems is triggered when that payment uh, is made. And so as a result of that, you're going to have increased calls to AP, um, requesting invoices included in a payment since they didn't receive the remittance information. And you know, that's the most frequent call we get to AP is one, where is my payment? Is two, I received my payment, but what did it pay for? So that's another one. Another one is purchase order delivery. So in some accounting systems and ERPs, no purchase orders will be sent automatically if you don't have an email address entered into that applicable field. And then the last one is really important as well. It's vendor record confirmation. So it not having that email address for your vendor affects the ability um, to reduce the potential for fraud in the vendor master file by sending email confirmations for requested changes. And so um, I always say that after you make a change to your vendor master file, um, send 
send that vendor a notification, let them know you made the change. And it's the same way that Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, your bank, anytime you change your profile online, they're going to send you a notification and say um, that your um uh, registration or profile has been updated. And if you didn't update it, then change your password or call in or something. And you need to do the same thing with your vendors, but you need to have a uh, valid email address. And it's not just valid emails, it's the right emails. So which emails are needed for the vendor master file and how do you get them? That's the next part I want to talk about. Most accounting systems or ERPs have a separate email for remittance information, and that email address can be a generic email address. So collect that one and make sure it's in the correct field on the vendor record needed to push the remittance to the vendor. So you still need it, but just recognize that it can be a separate uh, email address for that remittance information than an email address you would use for other things and it can have its own field. Um, and it's also good practice to require at least a remittance email address at vendor setup. So next you want to collect um, the names and email addresses of the points of contact. So separate from the remittance email address will be the names and email addresses of the points of contact and that you can use to validate like your vendor record um, changes. Um, recording multiple contacts if available will give additional options for confirmations and will assist with authentication if those contacts call or send an email to the AP help desk for assistance. And I actually just talked about taking phone calls um, from vendors um, uh, in episode 145 and what precautions you need to take. So make sure you listen to that episode if you're interested. Um, but again, uh, collect all the uh, contact information or contacts, emails that you have for that vendor uh, so that you have that on file to verify if they try to call in or maybe even send uh, an email. And also it's very good practice that when you're doing a confirmation that you confirm with with a vendor contact that is not on the email that you received or maybe even not um, the person that called in, uh, that's a best practice to make sure, again, that you are receiving a request from a legitimate um, person working at your vendor's office. Now, the other thing I want to say is make sure you identify those purchase order vendors that need email addresses to automate purchase order delivery. Um, again, there could be a separate email address to send uh, purchase orders. All right. So now that we've talked about um, what a lack of valid email addresses in the vendor master file can, uh, how it can affect you and uh, what right emails are needed for those different um, functions. Let's now talk about how you can capture or find those missing uh, email addresses in your vendor master file. So I have nine ways. So let's get started um, with the first one. All right, the first one is probably the most obvious, but it's invoices. So pull the invoice hard copy, a, a copy if you're in the office or um, the electronic images. Uh, just keep in mind that you more you may get more remittance email addresses on the invoices. But again, the remittance email addresses can be good to uh, make sure that you have some place to send those remittances from your system so that you don't get increased calls to the accounts payable help desk asking what your payments uh, paid for, what invoices were included on payments. So that's one is invoices. Uh, two is purchase orders. Now, these purchase order email addresses um, may be for purchase order delivery only. So keep that in mind. The third one is contracts. And I think we really just kind of overlook contracts in, in AP. I know in my last position um, as a practitioner, um, we just started really requiring and collecting the contracts maybe in my last couple of years. And so um, I think the contracts have a lot of information that 
can be included in there, uh, such as payment instructions. They may include the AR uh, email, uh, so you can get it from there. Um, also, points of contact. Um, one of the things that I tried to do at one of my positions, I wasn't very successful at it, but I wanted the contract template to include the uh, employer identification number or the IRS tax ID um, of the vendor so that if for some odd reason we didn't get it with vendor setup, uh, that it would be a part or it would be in the contract. And that can also uh, mean that uh, or be a way for us to validate that we're dealing, um, we're attaching the right contract to the right vendor record. Uh, but I wasn't very successful at that. It wasn't, it just wasn't a focus outside of accounts payable. But again, you may use a contract and get payment instructions, uh, uh, email addresses, points of contact. So it might be good uh, for that type of information. Now, the fourth way is to call or send a letter to the vendor. Um, so if you have a remittance address on the vendor master file, go ahead and send them a letter. Uh, if you have a telephone number um, and maybe a telephone number, if you don't have it on the vendor master file, can't come from an invoice, can't come from a purchase order, can come from a contract, uh, call that contact number and request the email address or addresses. Now, another um, resource, and this is the one, two, three, four, fifth one, is a stakeholder or stakeholder groups in your company. Um, they may have a separate system with vendor email addresses for both remittance and points of contacts. And I actually had to learn this the hard way. So I didn't realize that when vendor or internal team members collect the vendor's data on behalf of AP, and then they send that information in and then the vendor record gets created. I always thought they discarded that information. They actually do not. Um, they keep IRS W-9s because, you know, in some cases you got to go back and forth with the vendor and, you know, they don't really understand why you couldn't have taken it the wrong way. And so they're keeping that good one that you accepted. So the next time you need it, they'll send it to you, which is like totally beside the point of why you want to collect a new W-9 so you can get, get updated information. They're actually keeping all of that. And so uh, I learned the hard way that one, they're keeping it. And two, sometimes they have their own database or Excel spreadsheet that they're putting it in. Um, and so uh, you may have to make sure that uh, you follow up with them to ensure that they're not giving away right information that you can use to authenticate or just any vendor sensitive data. But in any event, if they have that, um, they may have that information already. And so you can go back to the those stakeholder groups um, or that uh, internal team member that has a relationship with the vendor and ask for uh, a point of contact or for email addresses. Okay, the next one, number six, is a third-party AP solution. So many third-party solutions will collect vendor email addresses as well as other contact information. So leverage those solutions um, used at your company. So for example, if you are in uh, the vendor team uh, and all you do is vendor setup requests, there may be an e-invoicing tool that the uh, accounts payable invoice processing team uses. And in that tool may be uh, vendor email addresses that you can use. So reach out to uh, that team and, and see if you can get access to or maybe even get uh, have them run your report and send it to you. Um, there may be other uh, tools out there uh, for dynamic discounting or a contract solution or any type of a tool that uh, houses vendor information from one of the other departments of your company and see if you can get access, uh, not necessarily access if you don't need it, because I, I love to practice least privilege access. So don't give folks access or roles to systems unless they absolutely need it. Um, but uh, you can always get or ask them to run your report. And so you can get those uh, vendor email addresses. Now, it may not be the point of contact that you need for confirmation, but it can be a start uh, uh, where you can start to uh, reach out to those email addresses and confirm who the right points of contact are and then get those email addresses. 
All right, number seven is good old LinkedIn. So LinkedIn company pages or their company website um, that can provide a valid URL um, to the company website. And, you know, that's something that many accounting systems and ERPs collect now as well. They have a feel for that. Um, and so you can use that um, to get the company website. And then number eight is the company website. So once you get that company Company website from LinkedIn. You can then go to uh, that company website to get the email address or telephone number um, to call and request it. Now, one of the things I've seen done in the past as um, clients or, or uh, other groups are really cleaning their vendor master file is they'll have an address, an email address format for uh, maybe one person that's not really a contact, but then they know the name, uh, the first and last name of who should be a contract a contact, but really haven't verified the email address. And so they will create that email address based on the known format of that company and then want to use it. And what I would say to that is you still need to confirm it. And so number nine, um, it's really uh, a not necessarily a way to gather it, but a way to confirm the email address. So you do want to validate the email address. Um, and there is a company called Zero Bounce. Um, it's a service um, where they will verify, tell you if the email is valid or not. So if you did not collect the email address directly, from the vendor or again created the email address based on the email domain address and the most likely format or the format um, that uh, you know is used for a different uh, employee at the company, then you really should validate it first to make sure it won't bounce back. Um, and so Zero Bounce can do that. One great thing, and I'll put a link, um, there'll be a link to Zero Bounce in the uh, accompanying blog, and that blog will be uh, linked in the show notes. Um, but one thing with Zero Bounce is you, do, you do get 100 free monthly email verifications. That may or may not be enough for you, um, but they do have paid plans as well. And again, the results will tell you if the email is valid or not. All right, so those are the nine ways and I'm gonna list them off again. So invoices, purchase orders, contracts, call or send a letter to the vendor, stakeholder people or groups in your company, third-party AP solutions, LinkedIn company pages, the company um, website, uh, and then validate uh, the email addresses. So thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed the 146th episode of the Putting the AP in Happy podcast, where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Don't forget to check the show notes for the links mentioned in the podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing and writing a review of my podcast on the platform that you use to listen. Stay happy. Stay happy.